in a democratic form of government, we find that one, the governmental organization, the government has three wings, legislature, executive, and judiciary. Democracy, it's either parliamentary type of a democracy or the presidential type of government. The presidential government, president type of government, what is prevailing in the USC. And also, when you compare to the parliamentary system of government in India, the most important fundamental similarities is that one, the government has three wings. One is the legislature, executive, and judiciary. The constitution has clearly defined the powers and functions, the organization of these three wings of the government. And there are perfect checks and balances. And what we call this one, the balance of power between the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. The constitution is the ultimate authority. It is the fountain of the authority. The head of the state is the president of India. He or she, the president of India is the head of the state. The president represents the government and the Indian state as a whole. So only the president is known as the unity and diversity. The president represents India. Now, as far as the government is concerned, here in the government, we find that one executive, legislature, and also judiciary. Judiciary, the judicial system. In this judicial system, it gives the judgments, it examines the laws, the disputes between the people, between the people and the government and various aspects and the other one is the executive which is the functional executive it is the executive which implements the laws made in the country it abides to the constitution of india and then comes the legislature legislature means at the state level we are talking about the legislature, that is the assembly, and also the uh, council. And at the central level, we are talking about the parliament as a whole. One is Lok Sabha, the other one is Raj Sabha. Lok Sabha, Raj Sabha, they, are the, they have the legislative functions. Legislative functions means they represent the feelings of the people, the opinions of the people. Because the members of the parliament are elected by the people directly for the Lok Sabha and for the Raj Sabha indirectly. As a result of it, because they are elected from this uh, ground, level, ground level, they come to the legislature with the reflecting the opinions of the people, talking about the people, that's what the legislature wants. Now, Legislature is its own circle. It should not cross its circle. At the same time, the executive, it, has, it is also bounded by some rules and regulations as defined by the Constitution of India. At the same time, the judiciary. The judiciary is the real custodian of the Indian Constitution. That means, wherever executive bypasses our our rules, the constitution, then it is the Supreme Court and the High Courts which will intervene to examine whether it is ultra wise that is contrary to the constitution or is it according to the constitution of India. In the same way, the legislature has its legislative functions. The legislative functions, they have the power, they have the authority to introduce the bills, they pass the bills, 
and the bills will go to the the approved bills will go to the president of india after the president of india accepts it and does it then it becomes a law then in case of any controversy then that law will go to the the way enacted law will go to the supreme court or the high court for the judicial review in the judicial review they will review all the clauses what made in the law what are the law and then they will see whether those provisions are according to the constitution of india or not so whoever goes whoever does anything either it is executive legislature or judicial everything should be within the constitution and once upon a time when indira gandhi was the prime minister of india there were so many disputes then when it goes to, when, it, when, it, when it went to the supreme court of india then the supreme court clear cut said that one any amendment to the constitution of india can be made there is no doubt in it because the parliament has the power of power to amend some of the provisions of the articles in the constitution no doubt in it they can add or they can modify but no one has the right to change the fundamental aspects of the constitution the constitution of india cannot be changed in its fundamental some clauses which are not affecting the overall function of the constitution that's okay it can be done so the supreme court and the high court they put the executive order check they put the legislature also on check at the same time the judiciary also cannot exceed its powers the supreme court and the high court the judiciary they should function within their orbit of functioning they cannot interfere with the policy making if it is not violating the constitution of india of the executive they cannot inter- interfere with the legislative functions of the parliament or the assembly if they are functioning within the framework given by the constitution of india and also if any violations by any judge of the supreme court or the high court they can be taken it take to the consideration by the legislature and the the legislature has every power they are authorized to pass impeachment it is certain clauses and all that one in this way the supreme court and the high court they will be within their very own limits functioning sometimes some of the judges may give a judgment which may not be according to the constitution when it is looked into real sense then what happens again the same judgment what the judge gave it will go for again judicial review what we call this one it will go for the appeal so appeal is given so that the court's vote decision can be reviewed for example district court has given a judgment and the aggrieved party feels that it is not according to the constitution of india or as per rule of the law then they can appeal to the high court and the high court judgment itself can be challenged in the supreme court in the supreme court also the supreme court judge whatever judgments they give it can be challenged again it will go for the appeal so in this way in every stage of the functioning of the supreme court to high court at the same time legislature executive lots of checks and balances are put so that it's like a speed breaker it's like a speed breaker if not what happens the people in authority if they feel that they can do anything they will do with all kinds of so fast and all that sometimes they may not see the real law what is as per the constitution of india whatever the governments can do but one thing no government can do is that one nobody can violate the fundamental rights of the people because the fundamental rights are fully protected by the constitution of india so wherever there is interference of the legislature executive or anyone 
then automatically there is judicial review and the fundamental rights will be restored. In this way, Supreme Court, that is judiciary, executive, legislature. These are the three organs of the government. There is checks and balances. One controls the other. To see that one, no one goes beyond the Constitution of India. Everyone functions within the Constitution of India. Thus, we can say that one. The checks and balances and balance of power, what is given by the Constitution of India. It protects the Constitution. It protects the fundamental rights. It is the most important authority to determine the democracy, to protect the democracy of the people. So in this way, it's the most important concept in political science, that is constitutional law also. It's most important that it checks and balances at balance of power. Thank you very much.